Hi everyone, this is Nicole with Titans of CNC Academy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to program the Titan 4M for the Tormac. To begin, we need to set up our stock, so I'm going to come up to Setup and select New Setup. In here I want to change our orientation to select Z-axis plane and X-axis. And we're going to choose this top face as our Z-axis, and we're going to use this back edge as our X. We want to change the origin to model box point, and with model point highlighted blue, we want to select the back left edge of the part. Next in our stock tab, we want to change our stock offset mode to add stock to all sides. I'm going to add 0.05 to X and 0.025 to Y. I'm going to do 0.23 to our negative Z offset and 0.02 to our positive Z offset. You'll just want to verify that these dimensions match your actual stock size for the part that you're going to be machining. And then click OK. Now that we've set up our stock, the next thing we want to do is face our part. So to do that, I'm going to come up to 2D and drop down to Face. And we're going to select the tool from our library. We're going to use the one and a half inch face mill that we created in the Titan 1M Tormac video and go ahead and click OK. For our spindle speed, I want to set that to 4000 RPM. And we want to set our feed rate to 20 inches per minute. In our geometry tab, I don't really need to select anything, so I'm just going to leave it all to default and move on to the heights tab. I want to change everything in here to model top. And in our passes tab, we're going to do 180 degrees for our pass direction, 0.76 for our pass extension, and 1.4 for our step over. I'm going to change our direction to climb and then move on to the linking tab. In here, I'm going to turn off the lead in and the lead out and click OK. So the next thing we need to do now that we have faced our part is to rough out the profile shape. So to do that, we're going to come up to 3D and down to Adaptive Clearing. And we're just going to select the tool from our library. We're going to be using the 3 8 flat end mill. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to set our RPMs to 4000. And our cutting feed rate is going to be 20 inches per minute. I'm going to do 20 for our lead in and lead out, and I'm going to do 15 for our ramp and 15 for our plunge. And the geometry tab, I can leave everything in here to default. I don't need to change anything. In our heights tab, we're going to change everything to model top. I'm going to do a bottom height offset of negative 0.77. In the Passes tab, I want to change the Optimal Load to 0.015 and the Minimum Cutting Radius is also going to be 0.015. The Maximum Roughing Step Down, I'm going to set to 0.8. Our Fine Step Down can be 0.08. I'm going to check the box that says Flat Area Detection and the Minimum Step Down for that can be 0.008. For our radial stock to leave, I'm going to do 0.01, and our axial stock will be 0.01 as well. In our linking tab, I'm going to set our retraction policy to minimum retraction. I'm going to do our maximum stay down at 10 inches, and our stay down level is going to be 70%. I'm going to do a non-engagement feed rate of 90 inches per minute. And I'm going to change our horizontal and vertical lead in and lead out to 0.02. For our helix, I'm going to do a ramping angle of 1 degrees. I'm going to do a ramp taper angle of 1 degree also. For our clearance height, I'm going to do 0.02. And our helical ramp diameter, I'm going to do 0.35. 
with a minimum of 0.3 and click OK. So the next thing we want to do is finish our pocket. So to start out, I'm going to come up to 2D and down to 2D pocket. And I'm going to leave the 3 8 flatten mill in there. I am also going to leave our RPM at 4000. I am going to change the cutting feed rate to 15 inches per minute. I'm just going to change our leads also to 15 and move on to our geometry tab. In here I want to select the bottom face of our pocket. And next in our heights tab I want to change everything to model top. Except for our bottom height, I'm going to change to selection and I'm just going to select that bottom face of our pocket. In our passes tab, I want to change our maximum step over to 0.3. And we're going to do a radial stock to leave of 5 thou. And I'm going to actually set our axial stock to leave to 0. Basically what that'll do is the tool will come down and it'll finish the bottom of our pocket, but it'll leave some on the side walls for us to come back with another tool path and finish it later. Next in our linking tab, I want to change our leads to 0.03. Our lead in sweep angle, I'm going to change to 45 degrees. And our ramp type is going to be set to plunge with a clearance height of 0.02. Go ahead and click OK. Now we can go ahead and finish the side walls of our pockets. So we're going to come up to 2D and down to 2D contour. And we're going to be using all the same feeds and speeds and tools, so I'm going to leave that. Our contour selection is going to be the profile of our pocket, so I'll just select that. In our heights tab, I want to change everything to model top. And then our bottom height will be once again selection, and we're going to select that bottom face. In our passes tab, I want to change our compensation type to wear, and I want to check the box that says make sharp corners. In our linking tab, I'm going to change our lead in sweep angle to 45 degrees and then go ahead and click OK. Now the next thing we need to do is finish the ledges here on our part. So I'm going to go ahead and actually duplicate that last contour. So I'm going to right click, duplicate, right click the new one, edit, I'm going to leave our feeds and speeds all the same. In our geometry tab, I want to close our current contour selection. And I'm actually going to select these radiuses on our ledges here. And then in our heights tab, I'm just going to remove our current face selection and just select one of these faces here. For our passes tab, I can uncheck make sharp corners. And in our linking tab, I don't need to change anything. I'm just going to click OK.
Now the last thing we need to do is finish the profile of our part. So we're going to right click, duplicate, right click, edit, and I'm going to come up to geometry and just remove our current contour selection. And I'm just going to select the bottom profile of our part. In our heights tab, the only thing I really want to change in here is our bottom height is going to be from model top and we're going to do a bottom height offset of negative 0.77. In our Passes tab, we don't really need to change anything, and same with our linking, so I'm just going to click OK. Now the next thing we need to do is start on our key slot. So to do that, I'm going to come up to 2D and down to 2D Contour. And we're going to select the tool from our building blocks library. We're going to be using the one inch slot mill. So go ahead and select that. I'm going to do a spindle speed of 2500 RPM. And we're going to do a feed rate of five inches per minute. I'm just going to change all of those guys to five. In our geometry tab, I'm going to select our contour, the bottom contour of our key slots. And once I have all those selected, I can move on to our Heights tab. In here, I'm going to change everything to Model Top. And then our bottom height will be from Selection, and we'll just select the bottom face of our key slot. All right, and then in our Passes tab, I want to change our Compensation Type to Wear. And I want to turn on our Stock to Leave and Roughing Passes. Now you'll notice when I selected roughing passes, it actually gave us a couple more parameters here. So I'm going to go ahead and change our step over to 0.03. I'm going to do our maximum step over at 0.03 as well. And I'm going to do two for the number of step overs. For our radial stock to leave, I'm going to do five thou. And I'm going to set our axial stock to leave to zero if there was a number plugged in here because our key cutter is the same size as the finished slot. Um, it would actually move the position of our slot and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to set that to zero. In our linking tab, I want to go ahead and change our horizontal lead in radius to 0.2. Our linear lead in distance will be 0.2 as well. I'm going to do a lead-in sweep angle of 45 degrees, and I'm going to change our vertical lead-in radius to zero, and click OK. Now to finish our key slot, I'm actually going to just duplicate that last toolpath. And the only thing I'm going to be changing in here is in our Passes tab, I'm going to turn off Stock to Leave and turn off the Roughing Passes, and then just click OK. Now we can go ahead and chamfer our part. So to do that, I'm going to come up to 2D and select 2D Chamfer. And we're going to choose our tool from the library. We're going to use that quarter inch chamfer mill. And 4,000 RPM with 20 inches per minute is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to leave that in there. I'm going to change these to 20 inches per minute. In our geometry tab, I want to make sure that we select the top contour of our chamfers. So I'm going to select both of those. In our heights tab, I'm just going to change everything to model top. And in our Passes tab, I'm going to change our Compensation Type to Wear. Our Chamfer Width is going to be 0. Our Chamfer Tip Offset will be 0.05. And our Chamfer Clearance will be 0. And in our Linking tab, I'm going to change our Horizontal Lead-In Radius to 0.03. Our Lead-In Sweep Angle is going to be 45 degrees. Our Linear Lead-In Distance will be 0.03. And I'm going to change our vertical lead-in radius to zero and click OK.
So the next thing we need to do is spot drill all of our holes. So to do that, I'm going to come up to drilling and select drill. We're going to be using that same quarter inch chamfer. So I'm going to leave that in there. Um, 4,000, 20 inches per minute. That looks good. Let's change that to 20. For our geometry, I want to make sure our hole mode is set to selected faces. And with hole faces highlighted blue, I'm just going to go ahead and select one of our holes. And then I'm going to check the box that says select same diameter. Next in our heights tab, I want to change all of these to model top. And I'm going to do a bottom height offset of negative 0.105. In our cycle tab, I want to make sure our cycle type is set to drilling, wrap it out, and click OK. So the next thing we want to do is drill our part. So to make it a little quicker, I'm just going to duplicate that last tool path. Right click and edit a new one. We're going to go over to our tool tab and we're just going to select the tool out of the building blocks library. It's going to be the 0.1772 drill. Click OK. Now I already like the feeds and speeds in here. I was going to go with 4000 with 16 inches per minute. Our geometry is already selected and in our heights tab the only thing I need to change is our bottom height offset is going to be negative 0.575. In our cycle tab I'm going to change our cycle type to chip breaking with a partial retract and for our pecking depth I'm going to go 0.05. I'm going to do 0 0.025 for our minimum pecking depth and I'm going to do one inch for our accumulated pecking depth and 10 thou for our chip break distance and click OK. Now the last thing we need to do is tap all of our holes so I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that last toolpath again. I'm going to edit the new one, come over to our tool and this time we're going to choose the 1032 tap. Now I want to change our spindle RPM to 550. Our geometry is already selected and in our heights tab the only thing I need to change is our bottom height offset to negative 0.475. In our cycle tab I want to change our cycle type to right tapping and click OK. Now the programming for this part is now finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.